Hello, my name is Iftikhar Kalu. I am from the Department of Cardiovascular Medicine at Mayo Clinic Rochester, and I'm really pleased to have this opportunity to discuss this interesting topic of HDL cholesterol and cardiovascular risk. I'll be trying to answer two main questions in the next several minutes. Is HDL cholesterol a risk marker or a causal factor? And then secondly, are very high HDLC levels associated with increased cardiovascular risk? HDL cholesterol is actually a very complex molecule as shown in this cartoon. It has both apoproteins as well as lipids. The major apolipoprotein is apolipoprotein A1, but it also carries ApoA2, ApoE, ApoC3, as well as an enzyme called peroxinase, which has antioxidant properties. The lipids it carries include cholesterol esters, triglycerides, free cholesterol. In addition, it can carry hormones and vitamins in the bloodstream. As a result, it putatively has a diverse pleiotropic effects, including reverse cholesterol transport, regulation of glucose homeostasis, cellular cholesterol efflux, antioxidant capacity, endothelial cell protection, and antithrombotic and anti-apoptotic activity, as well as potential effects on the immune system, as well as anti-inflammatory effects. So there's data from many studies showing clearly that HDL cholesterol levels are inversely related to cardiovascular risk. And this is one of the largest such studies, the Emerging Risk Factors Collaboration, which included more than 300,000 patients from 68 long-term prospective studies. And you can see clearly here that HDL levels on the x-axis are inversely related to the hazard of coronary heart disease events, shown on the y-axis. Uh, these upper bars are for unadjusted HDL uh, cholesterol, and the lower bars are indicate uh, the relationship after adjustment for relevant covariates. And you can see even after adjustment, there's a strong inverse relationship between HDL cholesterol levels as well as uh, coronary heart disease risk. As a result of these data, HDL cholesterol is commonly included in several risk calculators, including the pool cohort equations. However, in 2012, this study, which is a Mendelian randomization study, attempted to answer the question whether HDL cholesterol was truly causally related to CHD. The investigators measured LDL cholesterol levels and HDL cholesterol levels and looked at events in more than 25,000 individuals. And as I expected, LDL cholesterol was associated with increased hazard of coronary heart disease, whereas HDL cholesterol was associated with lower risk of CHD. However, when they looked at genetic risk or genetic scores for LDL cholesterol and HDL cholesterol, each about 13 to 14 genetic variants, they found that the LDL cholesterol genetic score was associated with nearly the double the hazard uh, of uh, coronary heart disease uh, per standard deviation increase. And in contrast, the HDL cholesterol genetic score was not associated with increased risk of CHD, here the hazard ratio being closer to unity. So these data suggest that HDL cholesterol may actually not be causally related to coronary heart disease. And this has been borne out by several pharmacologic trials that show drugs that increase HDLC levels actually do not reduce adverse ASCVD events. So the question is raised, is HDL cholesterol simply a marker of another metabolic pathway, such as triglyceride-rich lipoproteins? Increasingly, it's been recognized that triglycerides might be a, um, the causal factor rather than HDL cholesterol. Triglycerides carry apolipoprotein B particles, and they are somewhat atherogenic, similar to LDL cholesterol. Mendelian randomizations, in contrast to those for HDL cholesterol, suggest that triglycerides are actually causally related to CHD. Furthermore, pharmacologic trials have shown that reducing triglycerides actually does have a benefit, and these include the REDUCE-IT trial, where triglyceride lowering with icosapentyl ethyl reduced events in patients with CHD who were already on a statin. Of better regression analyses of the fibrate trials demonstrated that fibrates reduce the risk of cardiovascular events modestly but significantly. 
So at this point, the consensus is that HDL cholesterol levels are not causally related to coronary heart disease, but are a marker potentially of the triglyceride-rich lipoprotein pathway. The next question I'll address is, are very high HDL cholesterol levels associated with increased cardiovascular risk? One of the best studies addressing this question comes from Copenhagen in Denmark, from the Copenhagen Heart Study, which included more than 110,000 men and women. And shown on this slide is the distribution of HDL cholesterol in men and women separately. And as you can see here, there's a, a a proportion of individuals uh, and men who have very high HDL levels, greater than 100 milligrams per DL, and similarly a proportion of women in the tail end of the distribution here that have high HDL levels. So the investigators asked the question whether these individuals are at higher risk of adverse cardiovascular events in this prospective cohort study. And indeed, the levels of HDL, very high levels of HDL, were associated with increased all-cause mortality in both men and women, men on top and women shown here. And you can see that the hazard ratio for an LDL, HDL level of 97 to 115 milligrams per DL was 1.36, whereas in women, the hazard ratio for an HDL cholesterol level greater than 135 was 1.68. Now, this uh, association is a U-shaped one. You can see that a low HDL is associated with increased mortality, but as is high HDL. And the referent level is around about here for men and here for women. In the background, the blue curve represents the distribution of HDL cholesterol. When this association was adjusted for additional clinical covariates, there was an attenuation of uh, the strength of association, but it remains significant in both men and women. And this increase in mortality was predominantly cardiovascular mortality, although there was some signal for cancer and other cause mortality as well. In this study, individual, uh, it included individuals from several uh, large prospective NHLBI cohorts with nearly 24,000 men and women. And you can see here, uh, HDL cholesterol levels uh, were uh, associated in a U or J-shaped manner to CHD risk. So um, increased risk at the lower levels of HDL and then plateauing and potentially some increase in risk with higher levels of HDL cholesterol. The authors reported that there was a plateau in men at 90 milligrams per DL for cardiovascular protection and in women at 75 milligrams per DL. So in summary, HDL is a complex molecule. HDL cholesterol levels may not uh, necessarily be causal, we, uh, and higher levels are known to be associated with lower ASCVD risk, and HDLC is actually included in pool cohort equations. But pharmacologic increase in HDLC has not been shown to reduce adverse cardiovascular events. And HDLC levels appear to be a marker rather than causally related to atherosclerotic vascular disease based on randomized, based on Mendelian randomization studies. Very high HDL cholesterol levels seem to be associated with an increased risk of all-cause mortality. This association needs further investigation. With that, I would like to end and thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please do reach out to me on my email shown here. Thank you again.